What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 29 and as I promised in the last video we're going to start working on our encryption but I need to explain in depth exactly how our encryption is going to work. So before we created our uh, our main functions encrypt and decrypt and these are just going to be used to encrypt and decrypt our function. We had our variables that we are using, our text, which is just like the plain text of the uh, of what we're trying to convert into a cipher text. We have our key, which is something that's going to be known between uh, both part both parties, and our initial vector, which is also going to be known between both parties. And decrypt, which is just going to take the cipher text, the key, and the initial vector and do the same thing but backwards so that we can get back plain text that we put in here. And mainly what I'm going to be doing in this video, like I said in, like a second ago, I'm going to be explaining exactly how our encryption is going to work. And I actually went ahead and uh, wrote up a notepad file and I'm going to go through and explain it uh, as it, as you can see it and as you're reading it and I'm going to give you the examples that it's showing and I'm going to tell you how it's working together with it. So let's get into modulus and then after the modulus we are going to be I'm going to exp be explaining the actual difference between like key and initial vector and then after that I'm going to show how modulus is going to be used in order to encrypt our our text. So Starting at the top here, how modulus works. Basically, we have a few we have a few uh, variables in here. Mod is what's uh, is going to be the modulus that I'm referring to. A and B are both going to be numbers, and N is also going to be a number, and R is also going to come out to a number. Now that I think about it, um, and what's going on is A is going to be a position. Uh, in, in the situation of our cipher, it's going to be a position that a letter is located, but A can actually be any number, um, and so can B. A and B can both be any, any integer. <clears throat> um, a, B, N, and R, I guess, are all going to come out as integers, but sure. Uh, so A is the position that is located. For instance, uh, the character A is position 0 because at like I've said before, computers, their first counting number is zero. Uh, the second one being one, which comes out to B for our second one. So if we're going to be doing A plus B, we're going to be using the numbers zero and one. The N is basically our divisor, which is, it's going to be the number of elements we're working with. In this case, it's going to be uh, 26 because that is the length of, that's the number of elements in the English alphabet. Um, so that's what we're going to mainly be using as our divisor. However, you can use other numbers. You don't have to use 26 for this. You don't have to use, for instance, 0 and 1 and A and B. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. R is basically just our remainder. It's going to be what we're trying to figure out. This is going to be what we want. Um, so basically, the basic math uh, behind it is if you have two numbers that you're adding together and you want to modulus it with a, another number, you can add them up, and this would come out to 11, and then you do 11 percent 10, and percent up here, I said, is the key for uh, what modulus is. I don't know if I mentioned that, but the percent, the percent sign is used for modulus, and if you take 11 mod or modulus 10, the remainder of this, if you were to go 11 divided by 10, you would get 1 with a remainder of 1. And basically, we're not looking for the 1, we're looking for the remainder. So the answer actually just comes out to 1. Um, and that's how it works uh, when you go over the amount. Whenever you're under the amount, for instance, if you have like 3% 20, you would still get 3 because that is the remainder from the last whole one you would have had, which would have been at 0 uh, or 20 if it was from if it had gone over. So if that means we have 20% 20, 20, we're also going to be getting it's coming out to zero because that is filling up. There is no remainder. If you were to do 20 divided by 20, you would be getting one with zero remainder. And that's why we're getting zero. 
and basically the reason we do this is because if we have like if we have a specific number of characters and we want it to just wrap around to the beginning of uh, the list again we can use modulus to go back to the beginning of it so if you had a counting number that was like a and a ended up being like 28 just for some reason and uh, you you wanted to turn 28 into a letter what would that correspond to it's already gone past 26 which is the number of characters that we have so you would do 28 mod 26 and it would give you two it would give you two as our uh, letter which would come out to 0 would be a B would be 1 C would be 2 so this would turn out to be C so next thing I wanted to mention to you guys was uh, the difference between initial vector and key basically an initial vector is a random string of characters of like a specific length this specific length is going to be our block size and is going to determine uh, how many characters in a block we are going to be using uh, with a specific set of characters from our plain text and I'll show you that whenever I show you how the cipher works with it um, and then the key is more of a mutually known word or like key phrase between two parties key would be something more uh, associated with themselves but never associated with the text itself uh, but would be more associated with the people something they just know and remember or understand and then the initial vector is like a random string of characters that's uh used to actually give it uh like it's actually it's used to give it more of an encryption because it's not using any pattern recognition you can't use any pattern recognition on a random string of characters but you could use pattern recognition on a key so it just mixes the two together to create a like super encryption or a <laughs> it's just a much like greater encrypt it's a much better encryption um, so basically how this shift is going to work and I built this diagram or I just draw, drew up this diagram uh, to explain it to you guys basically if we had a block and this is how this is going to be our chain block cipher if we had a block C and D these are the two characters in our block and that is the plain text that we have and we have our initial vector which randomly came out to B and C which is going to be our initial vector which was randomized um, those are going to be the uh, first the first thing that we do in our uh, encryption is we shift our plain text uh, by our initial vector so if we were doing the shift we're going to add the character we're going to add these two to these two and if you see we're sending a and b here equal to the values of a and b so if we have two which is the value of c and one which is the value of b and we add them together we get three and we do the modulus just to make sure that in case it goes over it wraps around to the front but three would be D which is what it's going to come after come out to after the initial shift with our initial vector and the same thing is going to happen with a uh, with three and two see we have D which is oops D which is three and C which is two we add them together and get five and five comes out as F uh, in our A through Z series <clears throat> and after we have created or after we have created this block after we have done our first shift we have D and F we're going to be doing pretty much the same process over again except we're going to take D and F and we're going to combine it with our key and when we do that it's going to give it that extra layer of encryption I was telling you about earlier and A is going to be the D B is going to be the H it's going to add them together and it's going to get us our next our next number or our next letter and it's going to do the same thing and I use hi just because that's a pretty easy keyword to understand um, <clears throat> so adding them together uh, the I as well we get K and N which comes out as our ciphertext so our first block is going to be K N and this is going to be the first block as well as being the initial vector that we use for the second set of characters so after you have your uh, K and your N um, the 
the chain block cipher, the chaining part of it is where you take this, uh, take this cipher text that you created and you use it as the initial vector for the next the next set of or the next block that you're going to be using. So if our if our cipher if our cipher text was say uh, C D A B, I just want to really keep it simple so you understand the basics of it. If it was C D A B as our total as our total plain text, um, we would be taking the value of A and the value of b and this time we would be taking the value of k and n so we would be using the value of k which we came out earlier here was 10 and 13 which was n and a and b which were 0 oops uh, I guess that would be kind of confusing. So we have 0 and 1, and then and then 19 and 13, which would be our k and our n. So we would go through the same process again. Uh, we, we have a specific length for our key, though, and Basically, whenever you go past the length of your key and you go and try to mod it again like you're doing here, if you go if you go past the length of your key, you also can mod your key to the key length. So that it'll just start back over at the beginning again um, and just keep using the key over and over. So now that we're doing uh, A plus B, we end up getting 19 and 14. So 19 and 14 would... Yeah. Wait, this is supposed to be 10. My bad. So it comes out to 10 and 14, which would come out to K and N O. <clears throat> so it would come out to K and O, and then you would once again do it with your key. And it starts back over from the beginning of the key. So you would do it with H again, uh, which came, which ended up being a uh, H was 7, right? And that was 8. And I was 8. So you would do the value of K and O, which were 10 and 14. And you would end up getting 17. And if you go 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 comes out to what? Z, Y, X. I think it's X. So you would get x for the second letter oh crap <laughs> so if 14 was o we can go m and o p q r which is 3 away from 14 17 and 14 are 3 away uh, so you would know that's r so you would have like r x and those would be our new that would be the second bit of our encryption so our encryption at the end of it would look like K N R X and this is this is encrypted using both an initial vector and using a key and chaining that into itself over and over and over again until it finishes up the entirety of the plain text. So I hope this is making I hope this made a lot more sense. Uh, for what we're going to be doing with our encryption because this in essence is what we're trying to do with our program we're just going to keep doing that for our entire plain text using our initial vector and a chain block so i will see you guys in the next video where we are going to go we're going to actually start our encryption so i'm sorry if this video wasn't a actual programming video and it was more th more theory crafting but it's good to understand that computer programming is theory crafting uh, you do have to you do have to solve this entire issue you need to come up with a solution and make sure it works um, so I wanted to show you the process in which you can do that and uh, explain it in the best way that I can so if that didn't clear it up you guys can ask me as many questions as you want uh, 
in the description or whatever and I'll try to answer it if I can. Um, and if you do understand it, great. Uh, then we're going to see exactly how it's going to work in our encrypt function. And I'm going to save this file and I'm going to use it for our next one as well. Or not the next. Uh, we'll probably use it in the next video, but we we won't make any modifications to it until I start talking about decrypt, in which I'll show you how we can reverse all of this. So I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe. Peace.